Welcome to Voices of the Ancestors, where we explore Georgian polyphonic songs and the women who sing them. Hello, the voices today are me, Holly taylor Zuntz, and me, Susan Thompson. And our special guest, Nino Nanayashvili, who's speaking to us from her home in Tbilisi, Georgia. And I too am speaking to you from Tbilisi, Georgia. Oh, you lucky thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding down the fort here in England. <laughs> well done, Holly. Now, Nino is not only the leader of women's ensemble Ialoni, but she's also an ethnomusicologist. Okay, I'm slowing you down now. What is an ethnomusicologist? Well, it's someone who studies music in the context of culture. So that could include many things like cultural anthropology or psychology, folklore and conventional musicology. Wow, that's a lot of stuff, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so as well as being a musicologist or I suppose as part of being a musicologist, um, Nino knows all about people's rituals and beliefs. So in this episode, she talks quite a lot about the Batonebi ritual, um, but she doesn't go on to explain it. So I thought, although I'd really like to ask Nino, and I'm sure in future um, recordings we will ask Nino, um, for now, I'll tell you a little about what I understand the Batonebi ritual to be. Um, so Batonebi translates as lords, and I think by that it's meant spirits, not evil spirits or good spirits, just sort of spirits. Um, and I think the idea is that the spirits can enter a child and then the child uh, is ill. Um, and so the rituals of praying and singing and dancing are about delighting the Batonebi um, and enticing them to leave the child and move on so that the child can recover. Yeah, it's some of my favourite songs, the Batonebo songs that we, we've learnt from mm. Nino and other teachers. And this ritual is still alive um, in certain villages in Georgia. And it was really nice, actually, to reminisce with Nino about spending time in her village, Ledzadzame, which is in the western part of Georgia, where they actually speak Megrelian, not Georgian. And she told us about how the local kids there were inspired to learn about Georgian folk music because of us foreigners visiting their small village. Um, and I just love how Nino's tours bring foreigners and ethnopoeurs together. And I just I hope that they can start again soon, these lovely tours. Oh, yes. But before they do, can you just can we just go back again? Ethnopoeurs, what are yes. they? Yes, good question. Uh, well, Nino defines an ethnopoeur as someone who lives in a village and performs ethnographic traditional songs and rituals. How cool oh, is that? That's so <laughs> great. I'm so glad there's a word for it. Yeah. Um, in fact, Nino mentioned so many interesting words and people and ethnopoeurs and films and songs and we can't possibly explain all of them so if you're curious to know more then you might go to voicesoftheancestors.co.uk and click on transcripts and there you'll be able to find all of our episodes typed up and there's links there to many of the people places and songs mentioned While you're on the website, move across to the Contact Us page and sign up for our email updates. We've got something special lined up for next week, the extended version of our conversation with Nino. Yeah, so we had such an in-depth chat with Nino that we just couldn't fit it into one episode. So we decided to make an extended version, especially for our community of listeners. Now, many of you will have been taught by Nino face to face or on Zoom, so I'm sure you're really going to enjoy hearing about how she adapted her teaching during the pandemic, as well as putting grandmothers in the village on Zoom. And she also tells us a beautiful story about some carpet sewers who are also singers. So, to be part of our community and receive exclusive content, 
do sign up for our email updates on the website and I'll also put a direct link in the show notes. That's brilliant. And just a reminder of the website address again, www.voicesoftheancestors, all together, no dots or dashes, .co.uk. And for now, enjoy the first part of our conversation with Nino Nanayashvili. Hello, welcome to the podcast, Nino Nanayashvili. I wonder if you would mind um, introducing yourself to our listeners. Hello, my dear ladies. I'm Nino, as you told our listeners. Uh, I'm ethnomusicologist, Georgian ethnomusicologist, um, and uh, uh, founder and leader of the um, Women Ensemble, Women Traditional Music uh, Ensemble, Ialoni. Uh, we have 11th year uh, for founding. <laughs> Congratulations <laughs> on being 11. <laughs> And yeah, now it's a strange time for us, but we are still working uh, on our new projects, and uh, it's my, uh, I think it's my main happiness in my work mm-hmm. to do this with uh, nice girls <laughs> performers. Yes. And and what projects are you working on? Uh, the last one, it's uh, um, I think connected uh, with this pandemic strange situation. Uh, we decided to record uh, healing songs and lullabies um, and because, you know, it's a, um, uh, more quiet and uh, um, uh, nice intonations on it. And it's like a, um, it's a really healing for us when we uh, work on it and perform and for our listeners also in on the stage, we uh, every time uh, had the questions what kind of songs it is because it uh, made different mood for uh, listeners and this content is uh, that it's uh, from our old rituals um, part of ritual and uh, it has just uh, not just music it has uh, moving and praying with words and with candles and roses uh, circle dance and uh, Everything this uh, was um, so uh, nice and so important for ill people, mostly with illness, but on heavy, we say like this. Uh, and it's not so alive tradition nowadays uh, in Georgia, not so much, but in several villages, for example, in Samegrelo and Guria in the west part of Georgia, um, we know uh, two or three performers, Ethno Force, who uh, believe uh, power of these songs and ritual, and uh, uh, they do it uh, also in live. <laughs> Oh, that's so wonderful. Nino, would you tell Holly the story you were telling me the other day about the, the circle dance that isn't a complete circle, where yeah. where it's open circle? Yeah, I think it's a very nice um, symbol. It's connected with uh, our uh, ancestors' pre-Christian uh, religion uh, view. It was a uh, religion of the moon. And we have also a um, religion of Tucson, as old Egypt and uh, other civilizations. And uh, the circle dance um, connected with this uh, sky uh, part, so called. And uh, the open circle uh, mean new moon, the symbol of the new moon. And the closed circle, which is so spread in uh, different regions of um, Georgia, it's connected with full moon and also to sun. And uh, it was also part of uh, praying of this ritual that they um, express the visual form of this moon and sun, which was so valuable and uh, important. And they believe the power of them. But afterwards, it's uh, changed uh, to, for example, in Swanetti, it changed uh, the symbol of the uh, Saint George. And uh, mostly nowadays we perform uh, these circle dances not 
uh, with these uh, symbols, but uh, it stayed in, in the forms of, um, and it's nice to know about it and to think about it. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> so what's the song that Ioloni sings? Do you sing a particular batonebo with a half circle? Yes, yes. It's a uh, batonebo from Raja region, from the highest uh -huh. village of uh, Glola, which recorded from Shalva Slanishvili in 1950 years. Uh, but it's just uh, 40 seconds uh, of this recording. Um, very uh, bad quality of recording and old voices, of course. Batonebo. They just perform a uh, two line of song and words, mm, uh, but it's so nice uh, uh, sample uh, that uh, I decided with the girls to renovate it with other Patonebi uh, words, and uh, mm, we leave this melody but change inside like improvisations which can be in Rajian folk lyrical songs. So you're taking that old recording and giving it some new yeah. life. Yeah, and also I thought I read about this open circle uh, round dances uh, in Gigi Garaganitze's uh, uh, research also and in other ethnographers. And I uh, thought that it uh, would be nice to um, perform it with open circle round dance. Yeah. Oh, thanks for that story. And there's another story that that, that makes me think of where, where you heard just one voice, I think, of a recording. This time from, was it from? Uh, yeah, but the a mem you mean? Yes, a member of Polycarpe's choir. I, I, I don't remember his name. Yeah. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, it's a uh, so nice person. It's Vepria Antia. It's uh, strange. Uh, Vepria, it's the tiger in Georgian, and Megrivians like so strange names. Yeah. <laughs> and the name of the person is Tiger Antia, is the surname. And uh, he lives in Zugdidi, and he was a performer, and also he is now performing Oligarpe Hubuava's founding ensemble Odoia. But uh, uh, we discover that uh, he performs a solo song. Best uh, performer, I think, the lyrical uh, Megrelian Batonebi, Ia Batonebi song. And he performed uh, um, its uh, first time in the conservatoire stage in Nato Zumbadze's concert. Um, she was organizer of this Megrelian uh, evening, so called. And uh, I was so young, maybe 20 years old, not so much, and uh, not more. And uh, uh, when I hear, it was so amazing. And then uh, we tried to connect with him. And uh, uh, my friend, also a musicologist, Nino Razmadza, went to Zugdidi village with Kopoli Karpein expedition after two years. Uh, and uh, uh, I asked to record exactly this version. Oh, oh, oh. 
and when I start to work on this uh, song uh, and uh, decide to uh, do it in solo and choir, uh, it's a uh, uh, repeated part, um, solo um, words, it's repeated in uh, choir, but uh, in three voice with Chonguri. Yeah, and when we uh, went in the last year of Bodhicarpe was alive, it was a um, celebration evening, and we performed this song, and this web here was so happy, uh, and it's uh, one of the most valuable feeling when uh, your uh, so-called ancestor, your uh, the old generation, hear his own song, uh, not his own, the folk song, but uh, which he knows from grandmothers, grandfathers, from his family. And uh, when you perform it in your variation, improvisation, and when it's like it, and when uh, they are happy, it's, I think, the most gift what uh, performer can feel. I, I think you're so right. It's not about just copying what our ancestors did. It's about taking that gift and bringing it into our own words and our own style, I suppose. Yes, exactly. Uh, sometimes uh, I was afraid to change something because uh, it was not my own music and uh, I knew it from them. Uh, and I thought maybe they will be angry or not uh, like so much this uh, working on uh, their own variation, but they are... Uh, for example, from Andrew Papa Simashvili's example also, we renovated his uh, several songs and all the time he was so happy. Mm, yeah, it means for me that these persons are so open and real uh, creative workers and they are not like a, in a frame that it must be like this, not another way. Also, Polycarpe was so open because I, mm, I remember when me and the uh, member of Didgori Ensemble, Koti uh, Givia Besadze, performed the Tzabitu um, Didamanevit, the famous Megrelian uh, love song with boy and girl. And when we did it, we decided to show it to Polycarpe because he performed it in his young age with, with his uh, ensemble member of women. And uh, he was also so happy. And he told that nobody can in Samagrela nowadays perform this like you. And <laughs> we, we want to hear something more, like a note and uh, example how to do it more interestingly. But also, of course, it um, gives you more um, self-confidence and uh, like a permission to do more and more. And uh, I want to tell all of them big thank you for their work and also this attitude to to feel that it's possible uh, to to be part of this creation and uh, exactly the folk it's the people um, and we are part of this folk and in uh, the future we will be like ancestors for our next generation I hope and also, it's for us, it's a big example to be like this so-called teacher, that individual can be free and uh, can mm. create and can hear itself and find its individual uh, things and voice. And because, uh, for example, in Vepri Antia's case, uh, I change the uh, uh, mood of the song because uh, it was beautiful how he performs, but it wasn't mine. It was so, um, the previous version was like a playing, not lyrical and not so-called dramatical as for me, it's by healing songs. Because when I saw, for example, a picture of 
um, Nam Rakhnai, the famous beautiful uh, film, you know, I think. Uh, and here is the part when uh, one child died and another adult stay alive. But this ritual, it's so clearly um, played on it. Uh, that it was really not just nice melody and nice words and nice ritual with roses and candles. It was real fair because parents afraid and really uh, pray to Patanabi and they give their first to it. And yeah, it, I think uh, it's needed from our side, from women sensibility to put this uh, affair and uh, our. Um, Performing style, it's more lyrical as Bebrius, but it was okay for him and it was, I think, a big thing for us too. Mm-hmm. Mm, so the women are sort of giving it a, a different flavour to the men. That's really interesting. Um, yeah. Nino, you clearly have such a respect for the the people who've passed on songs to you and ancestors who you've learnt from. And I wonder about your own ancestors and do you come from a musical family? Uh, no, I can't uh, say that it was exactly a musical family uh, which was in past time. Not every uh, member of our family performed, but I uh, remember very clearly the first uh, case when I touched to uh, singing uh, process. It was with my grandmother in Samagrelo village in uh, my village, Lezatame, and I was maybe four or five years old. And we were sitting uh, on the chair, and uh, my grandmother was uh, so kind. And if you'd like to hear the rest of this story, along with many others, please sign up to receive our email updates, and you'll get the link to the full episode. You can do that by visiting our website, voicesoftheancestors.co.uk, and clicking Contact Us, or just click the link in the show notes. We'll be releasing it exclusively for you on Thursday, the 26th of November, 2020. Thank you for listening to Voices of the Ancestors with Holly taylor Zuntz and Susan Thompson. Our guest was Nino Nanayashvili. Music was by Ioloni, Bep Antia and Shelva Aslanashvili. <laughs>